A coronal hole that we've been doing a dance with since last year is rotating into the Earth strike zone, and it could bring us yet another solar storm. That story and more in the shorty this week. True to solar minimum, the space weather has been a bit on the quiet side lately, but activity is coming. We have a coronal hole that we have seen since August of last year. I can't even count how many times we've seen it now. It is still here, and it has rotated once again Earthside. It's going to be entering the Earth strike zone here in the next couple days, and it could very well bring us yet another solar storm. So your aurora photographers at high latitudes, stay on your toes. This could actually give you a pretty good show. At mid latitudes maybe not so much but there is a chance so don't count yourselves out the only thing is that this will be disrupting amateur radio operators and emergency responders on earth's night side i know things have been pretty good for you guys lately so expect a little bit of a rough patch here about midweek or so now on top of that we do have a returning region uh, that's going to be rotating into the earth view here in the next day or two it will continue to boost the solar flux so at least least radio propagation on Earth's day side will continue to be good, but we don't have to worry about any big flares from this region, so your GPS reception will also stay pretty nice. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, if you are one of the early viewers of my forecast, like my Patreon community, be sure to catch the lunar eclipse of the wolf moon tonight. It's going to be happening really soon, so make sure you get a chance to catch it if uh, you indeed have clear skies. We won't get another chance for a full lunar eclipse until 2021. But that's not the only excitement. We do have a solar storm coming from that coronal hole that is rotating into the Earth's strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting major storm conditions. As a matter of fact, about a 60% chance of a major storm. And at mid-latitudes, we're expecting unsettled to active conditions with about a 20% chance of a minor storm. So this doesn't mean you uh, aurora photographers at mid-latitudes that you're out of luck. You could actually get some aurora views, but you're going to have to stay on your toes. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have a bright region that's beginning to rotate into Earth view, but it's not strong enough to be a sunspot. So the sun is still considered spotless, and we have no big risk for uh, radio blackouts from any big solar flares. The nice thing is that we do have the solar flux being boosted into the 70s, so we're back into marginal radio propagation, and it looks like these conditions are going to stay all week. The nice thing, too, is that GPS users you can rejoice. The day side looks great for GPS reception. Now, because we are in solar minimum, the cosmic ray penetration is higher than it normally would be. So you frequent flyers, and this includes you air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please be aware of this in your flight plans. And for you early viewers of my forecast, I thought I would throw this little bit about the eclipse in here for you because it's going to be happening here in a very short while. Now, I've got this animation that shows in UTC what time to look for it. And as you can tell from the map, that this eclipse is going to be seen by a very large part of the populated world. So if you are in Europe or in the Northern America or even South America, go take a look because it's going to be the last eclipse you can see, a full eclipse at least, until 2021. So the space weather this week is getting very exciting. We have a coronal hole that is going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next couple days, and it could easily bump us up to storm levels. Especially at high latitudes, we could get some decent aurora, with even a chance for some aurora at mid-latitudes. So your aurora photographers definitely keep your batteries charged. On top of that, we do have a bright region that's beginning to rotate into Earth view, and it's bumping the solar flux up into the balmy 70s. How's that for solar minimum, huh? At least amateur radio and shortwave radio responders, you guys get a decent chance for some marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. You can't beat that. The only issue you might have is some problems on the night side when the solar storm hits, but then again, you might get a rural propagation as well. So don't give up. Now, the one nice thing is that you GPS users, everything looks pretty good for you guys. And as long as you stay away from the Dawn Dust Terminators and away from Aurora when the solar storm hits, you should be looking pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.